All right, Samsung Galaxy S3, Verizon Droid DNA, brand new phones here for 2013, some of the hottest phones for 2013. We'll take a look at the hardware side by side, we'll take a look at the software side by side, and we'll see which one of these phones ranks in for number one. Stay tuned. Droid DNA has this massive five inch LCD 1080p display. Galaxy S3 has a 4.7, uh, Super AMOLED display. Uh, some people prefer the saturation on the AMOLED. Some people prefer the clarity and color accuracy on the LCD. I personally prefer the Verizon HTC Droid DNA screen over the Galaxy S3, but that doesn't mean the Galaxy S3 screen is anything short of amazing itself. Very good color, very good clarity, very good sharpness. Uh, there's no reason why you wouldn't think that this phone, uh, or excuse me, the screen on the phone, uh, is anything short of amazing. Um, a lot of people who complain about screen quality compare it to some of the other leaders like the iPhone 5 uh, and some of the other HTC phones like the One X. But the Galaxy S3 is a very popular phone and it's because the screen on it is really, really freaking good. Um, if you take a look at this phone and then compare it to some of the other phones, you might be able to pick out some of the little flaws in here that some people are complaining about. Uh, most noticeably, the oversaturation in colors and um, the, the text doesn't appear as sharp as some of the HTC phones. But if we forget about the sort of negatives on the Galaxy S3 and just focus on the differences between the two, um, the differences are small. But the biggest is the size. Obviously, this is a much, much bigger 5-inch uh, display with a lot more pixels, 440 ppi. Uh, and so the HTC Droid DNA offers you a nicer user experience with the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the brightness up all the way on both of these so you get a good look at actually how how the screen brightness compares. Let's just check out the uh, the difference here in the browser. Um, you can also see some Yore here on the Galaxy S3 on the video and that's just because of the pixel arrangement. Um, you see that if you move it you don't actually see that. It's just the way the camera focuses on the screen. Um, but if we just compare side by side um, display resolution quality there's no question about it that the Droid DNA has a better screen than the S3. So aside from the screen, what about the actual build of the phone, the hardware, the externals of it? Well, Samsung has a notion of being sort of thought of as a plastic, cheap design, and I kind of agree with that. Um, I think the other market leaders like HTC and like Apple with the iPhone 5 have done a really, really awesome design in terms of uh, their hardware. And so when I look at the S3, don't get me wrong, it's not a badly designed phone. It does fit well in your hand. It is nice and lightweight. I like the fact that it's light. I don't like the fact that it sounds cheap, it feels cheap. This whole thing is sort of flimsy, cheap. Um, that takes away from the design of the phone a bit, in my opinion. Again, it's we're sort of picking nitpicking here, but when you compare it to some of the other more thought-out designs, like the Droid DNA, um, with its unibody uh, polycarbonate back here, you can sort of see the difference in quality between HTC and Samsung. Um, the Droid DNA is a fantastically designed phone. It has an awesome red trim around the sides and around the top and around the camera. Uh, the button layout is pretty good, I think. They've got a nicely sort of uh, etched metal power button up top. They have um, these sort of grilled red sides and the camera inlay flush with the phone here, which is different than the HTC One X, um, adds a nice little touch on the back. So you might be wondering, well, how does the phone feel in your hand? And so I actually have two different thoughts about that. The first is that the Droid DNA fits my hand a little bit better. I've got average hands. I'm about 5 foot 10. Um, the narrow build of this phone, the fact that it's a little bit longer uh, and then it is wider, like the S3 here feels a bit wider in my hand, lends me to think that I can reach things in the, on the screen a little bit easier. And so I still definitely have to sort of shuffle the phone around to reach stuff. But the fact that it's a bit narrow actually lets me reach more things on the screen uh, than it does on the S3, which is wider, and so I have a hard time reaching things on the S3. Even though the phone itself has a bigger screen, it's just more of a perception than it is a reality. That narrow phone, kind of like the design of the iPhone 5, tends to seem to fit your hand a little bit better. 
And so how about software? Well, both these phones are on an Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. They're both super fast. Uh, they both have great chipsets. They both have great software built in. Uh, HTC includes the Sense overlay, which in my opinion isn't as good as the S3's TouchWiz overlay. I actually prefer TouchWiz. I think it's uh, has a little bit nicer sort of built-in features. Um, it's less in your face than Sense is. I don't mind Sense, but if I had a choice between Sense or TouchWiz, I would prefer TouchWiz. Both phones are pretty lag-free. They're pretty crash-free. Uh, I haven't noticed any major issues with applications or st stability. I have noticed a hair bit of lag in the Sense keyboard on the Droid DNA, and that goes back to, I think, all of Sense. No matter how good they make it, it's going to have lag, and until they can get rid of those little tiny bits of lag, um, I prefer uh, TouchWiz, because I don't notice any lag in TouchWiz. And so how about cameras? Well, both phones offer amazing cameras. Uh, the Galaxy S3, 8 megapixel camera, same thing with the Droid DNA, 8 megapixel camera. Um, both phones are fast, they're fluid, cameras work really well. Um, you don't notice any lag in the camera itself, you don't notice any lag in sort of the viewing of the photo afterwards. It's nice and fast, nice and sharp, um, very, very fluid, very easy to use. Uh, same thing goes with the DNA. I think that uh, the 8 megapixel camera on here offers the same quality as probably the S3 and the iPhone 5. Um, easy to use. I actually don't like this Sense camera very much, just going back to what I said earlier about Sense. I think it's a little bit more weird. I mean, this this sort of filter button here, I don't really get. It kind of, it's just confusing. Um, but press to focus, just like everything else. Snap the camera button. Um, go back to the gallery. You can see just how fast it is. Uh, fluid, you know, really, really nice. Uh, very, very similar to the Galaxy S3 camera. Wi-Fi performance, both very good on these phones. Cellular data performance, both very good. Um, one nice thing about the Droid DNA is that it's factory unlocked GSM. And so actually, if you can see this, um, I actually have my AT&T SIM in here, and so you can throw your AT&T SIM in, uh, it's unlocked by default, and you can run this phone on any GSM network that supports a SIM card. Uh, it's a micro SIM slot, so you just throw it in there. Uh, you don't get a LTE, so the phone is HSPA only, but for most people that's probably not too big of a deal. Uh, HSPA is plenty fast for mobile internet. One last thing to talk about is probably battery life. I know a lot of people on the web have reviewed the DNA as having poor battery life, and I kind of agree with that. I think that they've thrown in a too small battery for this for how great this phone is and how awesome the screen is. I think it could have could have had a better battery. But that being said, I still get a full day's use out of it, no problem. Um, I do have to charge it at the end of the day if I use if I view a lot of videos or play a lot of games. Um, but with moderate use, I get about a full day's use, uh, no sweat out of this phone. Um, battery life on the S3 is definitely better. If you check out my uh, Galaxy S3, iPhone 5, and Droid DNA battery test, you'll see that I do a drain actually on all three of those phones and compare them side by side. And so if you're trying to make a decision between these two phones, the biggest thing it comes down to, personally, uh, is the size. You know, I mean, I think, uh, first of all, I think that they're both excellent handsets. I think that they're both top of the line for their respective manufacturers, Samsung S3, HTC, Droid DNA. Um, I think that if you're going to have to choose between the two, if you're not a hacker and you don't like to root your phone, the biggest decision I would say is to go check out what Sense is like and go check out what TouchWiz is like and go to the store, use both these phones, check out the, the skins that are on top of them. And when I say skin, I mean actually how the apps respond, what widgets are offered, what features come built in with the software. That's the skin of the phone. Um, take a look, pick it up, see how it fits in your hand, see how you like it, see how it feels, see if you like the weight. Um, check out, like I said, check out the skin. That's going to be the biggest selling point. Otherwise, the hardwares are very, very similar. Um, this nice 1080p screen on the Droid DNA is a huge selling point, I think. Um, I personally have been using the S3 since June, and now it's going to be replaced with the Droid DNA. I really like this screen. This is the best screen on any mobile phone yet to date, uh, and that's why it sits in my pocket. But it's totally up to you. It's your own personal choice. They're both awesome devices, and go out and check them out, and don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe.